Welcome back to Plant-Based Kidney Health. I'm Michelle Crosmer, renal dietitian here with Dr. Hashmi, nephrologist. And we have a great topic today. Dr. Hashmi, can you talk to us about cystatin C and yeah. what that even is? <laughs> so, so, you know, when I went to med school and then I went into my residency fellowship, all that stuff, even back then we used to talk about cystatin C. Now, this is like a long time ago. And so the thing was, everybody wanted to find a better way, a more accurate way of being able to measure how your kidneys are doing. So essentially, the question is, how do we measure GFR or glomerular filtration rate in a manner that allows you to have consistency? So as you know, if you have more muscle mass, it affects the variables, for example, creatinine. So if you take creatine supplements, they convert into creatinine. So people who take creatine supplements will look like they have kidney disease when they don't. If you have a lot of muscle mass, you may be spilling more creatinine from the muscles. That does not mean you have kidney disease. It just means you have more muscle. I'd show you my muscle, but they're very tiny at the moment. So I'll just leave it at that. I'll bring my daughter in who's much more muscular than I am. So that's the idea behind trying to find something that will give you an accurate assessment over all sorts of variables. So what is cystatin C? Well, cystatin C is just a protein. It's what we call a low molecular weight protein. Now, what's interesting about that is, is when it goes to the first part of the inside of the kidney, where we call the individual kidney cells nephrons, the first part is called the glomerulus. It gets filtered at the glomerulus, but it doesn't get reabsorbed. So whatever goes through the kidney ends up leaving. The thing is, is though, when it goes out of the glomerulus and into what's known as the tubules, it actually gets broken down. So the reason this matters is, once again, if you wanted to measure the actual clearance of your kidneys, cystatin C would not allow you to do that because it gets broken down inside the tubules, so you can't measure it directly. So this is another one of those things that we're looking at how much is found inside your body as a surrogate marker for how your kidneys are actually doing, just like creatinine. Creatinine does not measure how your kidneys are doing directly. All it tells you is, is if the kidneys are not clearing it, you're going to have more buildup in the body. That's all it tells you. And that translates into what your kidney function may be like. So what are the things that then can affect cystatin C and you want to know about? So for example, if you are a male, you're going to have higher cystatin C than if you're a female. If you are taller, that's going to cause it. If you weigh more, that's going to cause it. Um, if you have more fat, that's going to cause you to have higher cystatin C. Diabetes. Um, if you have a lot of inflammation in your body, let's say you have any kind of uh, autoimmune condition or anything like that where you have a lot of inflammatory markers that are higher, all of those things are going to cause cystatin C to look higher than normal. And then thyroid issues, both high and low. And the last one is, is if you're on any kind of glucocorticoids. So when we start to talk about this idea of cystatin C, then the question comes is, well, what is like the best way to be able to get the most accurate assessment of your kidney function? So we've done episodes before we've talked about kidney uh, function equations. And one of the equations we talked about is the CKD epi equation. And essentially the idea there is that you end up using cystatin C and creatinine together. And when you use it together, you can get a much better assessment of your true kidney function. Now, this is still not as good as directly measuring your kidney function. That would be like the gold standard. But this is literally the next best thing. And the reason cystatin C becomes interesting is, is when you look at like CKD epi, which combines cystatin C and creatinine, you can actually get a much better assessment of things like what's your risk of death? What's your risk of cardiovascular disease? What's your risk of end-stage renal disease? So that's where all of these things matter so much. And cystatin C turns out that it's actually more accurate at predicting the risk of death than creatinine is. So if you said, well, if that's the case, what is the best place that you would actually want to measure cystatin C? Is it outpatient? Is it inpatient? So here it is. 
in the critical care setting, in the ICU intensive care setting, that's where being able to use cystatin C would actually be a good thing because when it comes to risk of mortality and other things going on, it would give you the best assessment. So as you're watching this and you're wondering, okay, well, that's all fine and, and dandy, but what's the bottom line with cystatin C? So the bottom line, as you think about all of these markers is you're, you're looking for a better marker. Yes. But at the end of the day, don't get caught up on trying to go for perfection where progress will do you just as much benefit. So in other words, what I want to know is, is your kidney function getting worse? If I'm using creatinine and I see that last year you were at uh, GFR calculated of 60, this year you're at 40, I'm very concerned because why did you drop 20 points? What happened? And so whether you're using cystatin C or creatinine, I look for relative changes in your numbers. What's the change? Not so much comparing. And the last thing to note about all this stuff is, please do not go from creatinine to cystatin C or cystatin C to creatinine. Because if you do, you're going to find that it creates all sorts of issues because cystatin C numbers will give you a much different number as far as your estimated GFR goes than creatinine would. So should you care? No, because what you're looking for is what is your change happening for year to year? Okay, got it. So if you've been measuring creatinine, don't then throw a cystatin C and then compare those two together. But is there any benefit of if some, I mean, who, what person might want to have a cystatin C done? And then you do that CKD at the equation where you're using both creatinine and cystatin C, what kind of person might want to do that? So, so right now, cystatin C isn't used very much. It's used more in clinical trials, and that's where it's used. Even in critical care settings, we don't really use it. We still stick to creatinine. And the reason is, is think about all of the healthcare providers that you would need to retrain and make them understand what the heck does this mean? What's the difference? If you put somebody in the ICU and you're using cystatin C, but you're not using it in the outpatient setting because it's a better determinant, you need to make sure everybody's on top of it. The most important thing for measuring is that we get obsessed with the actual number. And what we forget is, yes, the number is important, but the change in the number is far more important and far more telling about your future. So if you're using creatinine, stick to creatinine, look at the change. And if the change is happening, your first question should be is, why am I dropping my kidney function? All of us, as we get older, we're going to lose kidney cells and our kidney function will drop down. That's all of us. But the rate of change is actually very, very slow. It's around half a percent, a percent every year that you go uh, after the age of 40. So it's a very low rate of change. But if it's faster, why? What should I be doing differently? Yeah. And I think that's a really good just reminder of um, if you can, you know, be tracking your labs and your trends and your labs yourself. Yes, you want your, you know, physician to be doing that, but it's always good for you to have that empower yourself to be tracking your labs and your trends. Because what if, if you see something off, like, hey, my GFR, you know, went down ten points this year, and then you can talk with your doctor about why that is and and what it might be. So, thank you, Doctor Hashmi. We hope that answers your guys's questions on cystatin C, and we will see you all next time. Thanks, guys.